Hi guys, welcome to this video in the series Java Tutorials for Beginners. In this video we're going to be looking at switch case statements. Why exactly is a switch case statement? It's something that you can use in Java to basically test a value against a bunch of other values and then do something based on the value of that variable or whatever it might be. So I'm going to kind of explain that using a class called a name checker. So I've created this class called name checker. We've got a find name method and it's going to take a parameter a string parameter of what we've called name code so name code basically is going to represent a single character it's going to represent a b c d e or whatever so one way that we can do this is with this so this is an if statement that i've um, already prepared this represents one way that this could be done so what we're seeing here is if name code dot equals a so basically if the name code that we pass is a then we're going to print out the name to be the name is alex for example if the name code is b the name is bob and so on so this is one way of doing it but it can um, it can become quite uh, quite vast when you you know when, when there's a lot of else if statements because we're going to have to have an else if statement for every single case and it isn't always the best way to do that, especially when you've got a large number of values that you want to test against. So another way that we can do this is with a case switch or switch case statement. So what we're going to say is switch and a, a set of brackets. What we're going to provide in the brackets is name code. So that's our variable that's passed through. And that's what we're going to test against. Open curly bracket close curly bracket and then we're going to have case and then we're going to have value so we're going to say case a semicolon a uh, colon and then we're going to say system dot out dot print line alex and then we're going to have let's leave a space case B system dot out dot print line Bob case C system dot out dot print line Callum. So we'll leave it like that just for the time being. We also need to include, so these are our cases. So we're saying that for case A, do this. For case B, do this. For case C, do this. The other thing that we need to include as well is a break. So we need to include a break after each case. So basically it's just break and a semicolon. So we can leave a space there just to make it a little bit easier to read. Break space. Break. We need to include a break because if we don't, this would all be kind of treated as one um, large statement. So if we didn't break here, it would try and execute the remainder of this code. So that's why we need to break at this um, system out dot print line here. So we can also say default semicolon and we can just say system out dot print line something like not recognized so basically the default will be if any of these aren't matched with so if it's not an a that's if name code that we passed in here which we're going to enter in a second um, ourselves as a parameter when we run this find name method if it's not a if it's not b if it's not c then it's default in that case it'll print out not recognized so um, we could just put not recognized um, must be a b or c so let's just go out of there let's compile this let's create a new instance of the class let's call find name now which we have add the parameter we need to include speech marks so uh, because it's a string so let's say a click ok and it prints out Alex 
let's try it now with um, with C and it prints out Callum let's try it with one that isn't in the list so uh, something that isn't A B or C let's try it with D and it says not recognized must be A B or C that's a basic example of a switch case so we've got our switch here which we pa we're passing um, something to be tested against you know a, a value that we want to test against we've got our cases here and of course in a, you know in a real life scenario of course there'd probably be more cases but I'm just trying to keep it kind of short and sweet so we've got what's actually going to run after the case we need um, our colon here and a break so don't forget the break after each um, case and a default as well so it can just apply if none of those cases match that's basically it for this video. I'm not going to go into anything else. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video useful, then please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.